Hey, what's up guys? I'm here with another linguistics video and in this video I'm going to explain how to make syntax trees. And first I'm going to explain how to draw them simply with a, a pen and paper because uh, I think that's probably the easiest way to go about showing you how to do it. Uh, and then later in the video I'm going to explain how to do it online using some uh, uh, computer tools that you can just find for free online. Um, so if you're interested in that and you already know how to make a basic uh, syntax tree, you can go ahead and skip forward and get a little bit of that information. Um, also, I want to point out that there's not one single correct way of drawing syntax trees. Uh, there's different schools of thought and there are uh, just different uh, techniques and different ways that you might analyze a sentence in order to draw your tree in different ways. and. Um, there's not one single agreed upon convention for drawing them. I'm going to use a pretty simple way for drawing trees here. Um, there's much, much, much more complex uh, analyses that you can do and, and uh, much deeper trees that you can make. But we're going to keep it pretty simple here. Uh, if you do want to learn how to make slightly more advanced syntax trees, you can check out my Linguistics 101 video series. Um, and I did, I think, four or five videos just on syntax, and, um, it, and I go much more in depth. But we're going to keep it pretty uh, simple for this video. Um, and as you can see, the first sentence that I want to start off uh, drawing the tree for is very simple. We just have subject, object, verb. And um, the first thing I do when I'm going to make a syntax tree is I'm just going to label it with S up here uh, because we are keeping things pretty simple. That S is for sentence and it just stands for the whole sentence. This whole sentence is uh, one constituent that we're labeling S and we're going to divide that into the noun phrase and the verb phrase. Okay, um, All of the sentences that we do here are going to start off with a noun phrase and a verb phrase. This is very common because um, most sentences in English are they start with the subject and then they have the predicate. So uh, I'm going to label them as such. Subject and predicate. Okay. Our noun phrase or our subject in the sentence is very simple because it's just a simple noun. Scar. Uh, the verb phrase is also not at all complicated. Uh, it's the verb and the noun Mufasa. So here we have subject, object, ver er, subject, verb, object. That's our direct object. And uh, not too complicated, um, but that's the basics for how you're going to start off a verb tree. Here we have a slightly more complicated uh, sentence, um, but we're going to start it off the same way. We're going to start it off labeling the whole thing as S because it's a sentence. And then we're going to divide it into our subject, uh, which is a noun phrase, and the predicate, which is a verb phrase. Okay, and um, if you look at the sentence, the very selfish lion mercilessly killed his brother at the gorge. Uh, we're going to divide it right here, because that's the dividing line between the subject and the predicate. Okay, the predicate being the part of the sentence that contains the verb, the subject being the part of the sentence um, that is the person or thing doing the action, if you need a review on that. Um, but now, both of these two constituents of our sentence can both be divided further into smaller parts. For example, um, the noun phrase, our subject, the very selfish lion, can be divided into a determiner, uh, which is the word the. You might have heard these words called articles. Uh, that's another word for them. Um, an article is a type of determiner, and I'm just going to label them as determiners in this video. Um, we also have here an adjective phrase. Okay, Our adjective phrase is divided into an adverb, which is very and an adjective, which is 
selfish, okay? And I'll draw little lines from the labels to the words themselves. So we have the very selfish, and then another part of our noun phrase is the simple noun lion. So that's our subject. Um, it's the noun phrase at the beginning of our sentence, the very selfish lion. We can further break our predicate into, um, in, uh, it's a verb phrase that starts off with an adverb mercilessly. It also contains a verb killed and here is the direct object. It is another noun phrase. Okay, so we'll call that direct object. And the direct object can do, be divided into another determiner. Now this one is not an article like the first determiner we ran into, it's a different type. Um, this is a uh, possessive determiner, his, okay? Um, but it's still a determiner, it functions almost kind of like an adjective. It uh, tells us whose brother we're talking about. So that's part of the noun phrase, and then the noun brother. All right, um, then we have to ask ourselves, what does this prepositional phrase here, what does that modify? Does it mod modify brother? It doesn't seem more like we're using this prepositional phrase to refer specifically to the brother who was at the gorge in contrast to the brother who wasn't at the gorge. It looks like we're using this prepositional phrase uh, kind of like an adverb in a way to modify the verb killed to tell us where the killing was done. So I'm going to call this prepositional phrase another constituent part of this verb phrase and we're going to label that PP for prepositional phrase. Okay, that PP can be divided into the preposition itself. Sorry for using the word PP. Uh, get all the giggles out now because <laughs> We're going to deal with a lot of PPs. Um, so that's the preposition. It can then be divided further into another noun phrase. Okay, and this noun phrase is the object of the preposition. Uh, noun phrase, again, can be uh, broken down into the determiner, the, and the noun gorge. So there we have it. It's mainly divided into a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Um, but then each of those gets divert, uh, divided further down the further you go into the hierarchy of the sentence. I want to show you one more um, type of sentence that you can build um, before we go to the uh, computerized version of uh, how to make a syntax tree. Um, and this is a, a similar, similarly complex to the last one, but uh, it adds in one more uh, little uh, variable. All right, and we're again we're going to start it off with the S, and we're going to uh, divide our sentence into noun phrase again and the verb phrase, our subject and our predicate. All right, but this time um, in the sentence, everything that the light touches is our kingdom. Uh, this time our subject is more advanced; it's more complicated than our predicate. Okay, and we're going to divide it right here because. Really, the subject of the sentence is everything that the light touches. Okay, that's what the sentence is about. And uh, we're going to divide our noun phrase uh, into the noun, which is everything. And we're going to divide it again into... Uh, this time, I'm going to introduce a new element, which is called a complementizer phrase. Okay, and a complementizer... Here, this word that, here, that's a complementizer. And a complementizer is basically a word that allows you to uh, include other words into your sentence. In this case, we're including, um, we're including another sentence uh, as part of this noun phrase, okay? So it, it allows you to embed a whole new sentence into your uh, syntax tree. So this is our complementizer, and uh, as, as a complement to the complementizer, we have a whole nother sentence. The light touches, all right? Uh, it's a strange sentence. Um, <laughs> it's, really, we would call it a, a clause, um, but I'm gonna call it a sentence here uh, to make things simple. So the sentence is divided into, once again, another noun phrase and another verb phrase, okay? So we have another subject and another predicate in this sentence that is embedded within the bigger sentence. 
All right, and this noun phrase can be divided into the determiner the and the noun light. Okay, and then this verb phrase is really simply just one verb, and that's it. Um, but you see how this whole sentence here is embedded in the larger sentence. And then uh, we've looked at the, the larger subject of the sentence, and now we're going to go to the larger predicate of the whole sentence, which is, is our kingdom. All right, and here we have a, uh, a verb, is, and we have a, a noun phrase embedded within the verb phrase, which goes to the determiner, our, and the noun kingdom. So there you have the syntax tree um, for everything that the light touches is our kingdom. Now, um, I realize that the original quote from the movie doesn't include this word. That's fine. Um, a lot of times complementizers can kind of be unspoken. Um, they're still there. Their, their node is still there as part of the sentence, but it's just not spoken. Um, we understand that that the role of this word is still being fulfilled. So a lot of times when you don't have it in the sentence, you'll uh, include that little symbol to show that the complementizer is simply unspoken. It's just assumed to be there. All right, now my favorite resource for creating syntax trees online, if you want them to look nice and digital and a little bit more professional, is this website, mshang.ca backslash sin tree and honestly I never remember that website and I don't have it bookmarked but I just type in uh, syntax tree generator into Google and this is always the first search result and when you're ready to create your sentence tree uh, you just simply start off by typing the sentence that you want to make a tree out of so everything the light touches is our kingdom all right there's our sentence, and we're gonna start off by putting it in brackets. Uh, you use square brackets for everything that you're gonna do on this site. Um, a new set of brackets makes a new level, and the first word, the first item in your brackets is gonna be considered um, the, the label for that node. So you can see here that uh, this program thinks that the word everything is the label for the uh, for the sentence and in fact it's not I want to label this with an s and so you see that uh, the space bar there is what creates the new um, the new label and then everything after the first space is just considered to be these brackets here to um, to offset oops. now we're going to use brackets to offset every level of our syntax tree so uh, just like before, we're going to start off by separating the, um, the subject from the predicate. Okay, And you always need to open and close your brackets. So here we have the subject, everything the light touches. I'm going to label that NP for noun phrase. And this is the predicate. So I'm going to label that VP for verb phrase. And now you see that I have uh, my two sections uh, of my tree divided into uh, their respective uh, constituents with the border being right there. And now that I have my tree divided into the two main branches, I'm going to start inserting brackets into the sentence so that I can divide my bigger constituents into smaller ones. So I'm going to bracket the word everything off it's, all, it's really important to open and close your brackets every time because if you start using the wrong number of brackets, uh, things are going to get really confusing really quick. All right, and I'm going to label this as N. So now I have the word everything under the label noun. And then here is my complementizer phrase. Uh, start, open the brackets and close the brackets. All right. Um, like I said last time, uh, if you don't have an overt complementizer that's uh, actually spoken, you can include this little null sign, and that will uh, take the place of the complement. So there's my complement. It's an unspoken complement. And within the complementizer phrase, I have another smaller sentence. Okay, so we'll start that off with an S to show that it's another sentence. Uh, within the sentence, we have another noun phrase which is the light 
I'll just make sure I put that space in there. The light, and we have another predicate, which is a verb phrase. Uh, we'll just call it a verb because it's only one word. Open and close your brackets. Um, and then within my noun phrase, my smaller subject, I have uh, the determiner, the, and I have the, uh, the noun, light. Open your brackets and close your brackets. Let me zoom out here a little bit so you can see the whole thing. All right, so now we have our uh, noun phrase or our subject completed. Uh, then we would go to the predicate or our verb phrase. And uh, this is relatively simpler. So we're going to start off our verb phrase with simply just the verb. You open your brackets, close your brackets. And then um, the complements to the verb, which is another noun phrase. Open the brackets, close the brackets. Uh, it doesn't matter where you put the uh, closing bracket in here as long as you add one more than was uh, previously there. So we have in our noun phrase, we have the determiner, our, and we have the noun, oops, got to start it off with a bracket, noun, space, kingdom, and close it off with a bracket. And that is our verb tree. Let me just check it over real quick to make sure everything is right. Everything, uh, unspoken compliment, complimentizer, everything the light touches is our kingdom. Yeah, it looks good. Um, in our smaller sentence, we have a noun phrase and a verb, the light touches. Yeah, everything's good there. Um, things will start to get really wacky if you miss one or two brackets. So let's say I put a bracket there, you know, close it off there. Things are, things are just starting to get really wrong. So, um, the other way you could do this uh, this verb, the syntax tree, is by starting off just left to right, and so going S, and then I know that my noun phrase is first, and then within the noun phrase, there's the noun, everything, right, and then close it off, and then you go to uh, your complementizer phrase, and then you, inside your complementizer phrase, you have that, and uh, close that off and then determine or, you know, noun phrase or whatever, but it, it, it's going to be a lot more complicated. I find it a lot easier to start off with the whole sentence um, rather than uh, trying to go left to right um, because then all you have to do is put your brackets in the right spot. All right, so that is how to create a syntax tree. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. So thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys later.